Hey Carlo, uh, that demo X Alps that you had, <laughs> uh, you you haven't got it anymore. <laughs> um, I can I can give you the review now. It's quite short. Shut up and take my money. Is on. There's only one at the front and one at the back. <gasps> is it a two-liner? <gasps> is it a lightweight? <sighs> dun, 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 dun. We have Omega X Alps. Three. Check it out. You've got, there's your one suspension and there's the other and there's nothing else, no other lines. So this is what uh, what the guys have been using in the X-Alps. this feeling. Up bar, on the back rises. Wind in my ears. Yeah! And it's solid. Solid. That's what I like. When you push the bar and you get that feeling of a two-liner. I can pull down on these backs in really nice pressure. Yeah! <laughs> okay, this is a powerful glider. It's quite hard. Um, surprisingly hard for a lightweight wing. The, the brakes here, there's a big kickback on the brake. So it's quite a high brake pressure in the turn. It's a bit planky, the wing itself in the turns. It's quite uh, resistant to turning. Um, you know, to rolling and to banking over quickly. Not too much, but that's certainly its character. Uh, but an experienced pilot can make it work. It's similar to the X-Alps 1 with that steady turn. Like you don't have to do a lot of management once you're in a thermal. But this wing feels like it gets better when you put your hands up. Like you shouldn't really be holding the brakes. Just want to go up like this and let it search. Getting a little bit of feedback from the wing. Um, it's enough. I can feel what the air is doing. But there's uh, quite a hardness to the wing that it's not, it's not talkative. It's not as much information as a Sigma. And it doesn't have quite that sweet, um, agile turn and uh, redirection as the Sigma. So the Sigma is certainly more fun to fly, but this one you're getting the benefit of that power, acceleration on bar, solid feeling, and uh, <laughs> super lightweight. So I can live with that. You can see I'm the only one down this ridge. Bit of a headwind, it's quite strong conditions, hard hitting. Uh, we're getting sort of three up, but quite gusty. And I'm totally happy on this wing, totally comfortable. First time I've flown it, yeah, it feels collapse resistant. It's such a hard thing to define and to test. And for sure, you'd have to keep a hand on this wing in rough conditions, but it feels like 
I can leave it. I don't need to hold it back all the time. And that's so cool. Yeah, this is what this glide is made for. These long, fast transitions. When you can push out of the bar and go upwind. Eee! <laughs> I feel like I'm getting my freedom back. I can go places. Like, uh, push the bar. It feels quite plain. Uh, like, there's no shock absorbers. Like, it's quite hard sprung. Like, everything's been stripped out of the car, all the comfort fittings. But that leading edge, I really feel I can trust it. It uh, hasn't given me any indication of wanting to blow out, needing management. <laughs> ah, yeah. I can do things with this wing. If you haven't flown a two-liner before, it's difficult to describe the confidence you get from a wing that can handle turbulence and is just solid. Bring it on! <laughs> very nice ground handling, very solid, very good feeling. Yeah, amazing. Doesn't feel like a two-liner to me. So as you can see, I've, I've landed. Look, okay. Yeah, and no, I've landed. I didn't want to, but I have to stop at some point. And now I'm just gabbling along like an idiot because I'm super happy. <laughs> this thing, ah, I love it. It is awesome. <laughs> I don't normally get excited about gliders. Actually, I always get excited about gliders. But this thing, I've fallen in love with, straight away. Um, unbelievable. Blown away by how solid this wing is. Um, because it's an ultralight. I mean, this thing weighs next to nothing. It's three and a half kilos. And I had the X-Alps one. So I know this kind of wing very well. I flew the X-Alps 2 and reviewed that as well. This is something quite outstanding, quite different. Um, it's, it's got all of the solidity that I associate with a two-liner. If you haven't flown a two-liner and you're in that sort of experience category of that you're capable of flying an END, really, you have to go and try it. There's, there's a game change with the way the wing feels and I feel safer and more confident on a two-liner than I do on a three-liner. The x 1 was a three-liner and I reluctantly changed to a three-liner from a two because the wing was so light. What I really wanted was this. It feels powerful, strong and hard. 
Um, the feeling in the air is like there's no shock absorbers. The, the car has been leaned down. It's bad. I'm still getting feedback from the wing. I still feel like I can feel what the air is doing. It's calmed and I would say I'm getting about, I don't know, 35% of the feedback that would be available that you could tune into a wing. Um, it's just enough that I can feel what's going on. I can feel the wing flexing and moving. Very little energy required to control it. So in a way it's similar to the X Alps 1 like that, that it doesn't require a lot of you know, active flying and catching the wing. Um, for sure with this aspect ratio you have to keep control, keep command of the tips at times in thermals and you do have to control dives at times but they're very slight. Most of the time the wing is very planted above your head and I was finding that the energy that I needed to manage is low, easy. But it feels like you can put your hands up and you can cut through the air and you can go places. This is much more controlled and rigid compared to the Sigma 10. So you lose a little bit on the agility and the feeling of the air, but you gain with power, stability and collapse resistance. I feel like this leading edge I can really trust. I feel when I'm pushing out on the bar, I've got a sense of a really strong, taut leading edge that's resistant and that makes the world of difference to me. Sometimes on these lightweight gliders, you feel like you've compromised because you've lost some structure in the wing and the wing kind of collapses very easily without warning and they always reinflate very easily with the lightweight gliders but sometimes you feel like Ugh, in really rough stuff you're a little bit compromised. Not at all. Not at all. I feel like I've improved my safety by going from a three-liner to this two-liner. Um, I'm more solid in the air. I've got less to manage and I don't need to catch the glider as much. You're on the back risers and it's a beautiful contact with the wing on the two-liner. Um, those little T-bars are beautifully finished and really feel good in the hand and they're in the perfect position so you're flying at a higher speed than you would if you were just on the brakes you tend to be on the risers and using the accelerator and I found I was moving around the sky um, when the wind is strong that top speed of your wing makes a huge difference I mean I went a long way back that way and I glided back into wind into that 30k headwind on full bar and I was comfortable pushing out and just letting it fly, which says a lot, you know. There's the dike. Strong conditions. And I can still get away. Because I've got that reach. So if you have lots of experience and you are wanting to push your um, cross-country flying into the next level, you've got to be on top of your game, I'm totally, I'm assuming you've done your SIV courses, you've got, I don't know, 300 hours of thermic flying, at least maybe 400. Um, and especially if you're looking at hike and fly racing, this is a fantastic option. Um, it does the ultra light, low pack weight, super light efficient wing very well. It does the two-liner solidity and confidence um, and performance really, really well as well. So you've got a combination of both. If you're into XC flying just for recreational cross-country flying, it's still a good choice. It's still accessible enough. I think it doesn't, um, it's not extremely demanding as a two-liner. It's a good step into the two-liner category. Um, but its real forte is that you're getting ultra light, high performance with a lot of built-in stability. Um, I like all of the material choices. Um, I'm particularly impressed by how few lines I've managed to make uh, that spread the load in the glider. When you look up, you can see it's nice and taut. 
and I'm particularly impressed with the strength of the wing in the air. Yeah, I'm really, really impressed with that. It's just, yeah, really, really sorted. Brilliant on the ground. I'm a little bit, actually, I'm a little bit, wow. <laughs> yeah. It sort of reminds me of the Omega 8, actually. Funnily enough, I was thinking it does, but... Sort of that stable... Reminds me of that, but more solid. Them. It feels very solid. It feels... Yeah. It feels... Planted. Like it's, not, yeah. like it's cutting through the air. Yeah. The pilot demands in the air when you're thermaling and dealing with turbulence, a high C. Yeah. But you're right, on the ground, although the ground handling's easy, the, the aspect ratio and the potential, I think what I felt when I was ground handling it, the behavior in stalls, I couldn't hold it in the stall. I can see that if somebody gets it into a stall situation, you're going to need some finesse to sort it out right. I've not had a two-liner before that you can just bring right up from the ground, even in a light wind. I did it earlier when the wind wasn't strong and it just... Yeah. In fact, you do need to hold it down in a strong wind, don't you? Which, I mean, other two-liners, that's been a bonus of them. It's like... Gobble. <laughs> <laughs> and then they come up and go... Whoa. I didn't... I mean, it's got a bit of a pull on it, but not... For a, for a D-class glider, yeah. it can feel like the Peak 4 had more of a hang back and then power up. Mm. Where the Peak 4 jumped ahead, but then when you pull the brakes, mm -hmm. it stalled you can really stall early. It yeah. Whereas this wing, if it goes ahead, it doesn't shoot that much. It does shoot a bit, but you can catch it on the brakes and you can hold it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't then peel back and stall. Mm -hmm. You can actually let it go and you catch it and you can go off. Yep. So it gives you that freedom to the sort of tolerance yeah. around that pitch point that it's actually, you can hold it back, hold it back, hold it back and it doesn't stall, which is yeah. uh, really surprising that the, the amount of stall tolerance. Yeah. It's really good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was brilliant. I mean, it really invited you to play around with it. I was on the hill. With other D-class gliders, I'm kind of like, you get it up, it's like da-da, and you kind of just want to get up and get it off. With this, I was kind of invited to play around and put the glider on its tip and run around and jump about and move around. It was brilliant. It was really good. Yeah. I like that. That's what I want in a glider. I want playfulness first. Performance can come later. As long as I've got the playfulness, the enjoyment comes first, then obviously if you can have the performance and everything as well, brilliant. So, yeah. yeah. So, very nice. Um, what did you think of the handling? I found it was quite stiff and a little bit unresponsive compared to other wings and something like the Sigma 10. Yeah. I felt like it was a bit like, oh, it's a bit restricted. It's like on the corners, it didn't go around straight away. It was a little yeah. bit, and brake pressure's high. Yeah. Yeah. So with the Sigma 10, I think of it as like a little sports car. It's got, with this, it feels very efficient. It's very efficient. You can certainly get it around. I had some punchy course today I could I can get it round I can get it but it's definitely it's made for efficiency and solidity fast I think so yeah it's not the most sort of sporty feeling glider um, but I, I I think if you've got a d-class glider and you want the performance and you've got a lightweight glider actually to get that solidity is brilliant yeah. who's it for ideal ideal Greg <laughs> 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 I was actually oh, thinking that. Nailed it. <laughs> Got my freedom back. Yes. <laughs> so I think it's clear it won the X Alps. Of course, that was Kriegel at the helm, but I think the wing had something to do with it. It's a really good wing. 
that will keep you happy in the air for a long time. Flying in grumpy conditions, absolutely no problem. It gets three thumbs up from me. Ha 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 ha!